Welcome to Florida. What's up, everyone? This is Ken Tanaka of Wish for Fish, giving you tips, bringing you on adventures, and taking you to the stream, or in this case, to the ocean. I just got back from Florida, and that's where I acquired this super sweet tan line. Uh, I was fishing with Josh Callahan from Blackberry Farms, and also got to go out in the water with Tanner Sievert. Our main target was redfish. That's pretty much what we were going for the whole time, except for an occasional trout that we saw. Uh, the best time to go for redfish at Mosquito Lagoon would be October, November, December. But we did get plenty of shots on them. Unfortunately, we didn't do so well. I had an incredible time and did learn a lot of things. Uh, one of which was I normally make my leaders from Maxima Ultra Green. That's what was in my bag and that's what I normally use. So I just quickly made a, a leader with Maxima Ultra Green. Now after like the fifth refusal, I knew it wasn't my presentation. I knew it wasn't my fly. So I switched it up to fluoro and wham, I got my next fish. So uh, that's one thing that I really highly recommend is using fluorocarbon leaders. Another thing you want to do if you're going by yourself or with the guide is to see if they have a stripping basket. It will really help you out. We were using a stripping bucket, but uh, line management is critical. Everyone has a story where they lost a fish because they wrapped up something around the boat or wrapped it up around their feet or maybe even there was a knot in their line. And matter of fact, that's how Josh lost a really, really nice fish because of a knot in his fly line and it just got caught in the guides and popped off. <laughs> Oh no. I had nothing I could do. Oh no. That hurts. So one thing you might want to do to prevent those kind of things is use a stripping basket. And even if you're using them, just make sure that you clear the line and make sure there's no knots in it, especially when you hook up on a fish. Polarized glasses are a must, especially when you're fishing flats or sight casting to any fish. Stream or ocean, uh, you could tell a considerable difference. I was using amber color lenses. I highly recommend amber color lenses uh, versus the dark. Uh, it's really easy to pick fish off of the bottom and when you're trying to pick out shadows, uh, darker glasses, it's a little bit harder. I was using Stockholms from the Cassette Company. You could pick those up in the description below. Biggest tip that I can give you if you're gonna go hunt reds is practice your casting. If it's not casting in high winds or changing direction in mid cast or casting over your opposite shoulder as well as casting during your back cast. Now those things will help you out tremendously. I did hear an interesting tip during the Orvis podcast that somebody was saying uh, that they get somebody to throw a bean bag 
uh, behind them during the cast. Obviously that takes two people, but that's a great way to pick out targets that aren't just necessarily standing still because the guide is gonna just call something out and you're gonna immediately try to cast to this uh, moving object. That's another thing that's important is you wanna be on the same page with your guide. If it's not him telling you that the fish is at 11 o'clock or two o'clock or uh, 50 feet from the boat or 20 feet from the boat, uh, it's important to also know uh, if the fish is facing right or left and to lead the fish uh, a certain amount of distance accordingly. Oh, oh, got him. Uh, other one definitely feels like it. Yeah, yeah. I just better shut up for he comes unbuttoned or something like that. I'll I will jump in this water and swim home. I said I was... so many animals during this trip to see manatees and stingrays and dolphins and even had a chance whoa, 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 whoa. to catch an alligator. Unfortunately, Tanner wasn't too excited about that. <laughs> We're not going to hold Tanner Sievert responsible for anything that happens right now. I got to use two different lines during this trip. I did get to use the Corton Guideline uh, as well as the Rio Summer Redfish Line. Personally, I preferred the Cortland Guideline. It loaded my rod really well. It was easy to punch through the wind. Uh, the Summer Redfish Line was a lot more supple presentation 
but uh, if I were you, I would highly recommend lining up a size. So if you're fishing an eight weight, I'd go with a nine weight. I did use a couple different flies. One was Chris Cease, the Redfish Wiggler. Also uh, from Mike Callahan, the Stabila Shrimp. But I ended up catching the fish on a fly that Tanner recommended, and that was just a really simple shrimp pattern. And it was more of a neutral color, uh, and this really did the trick. Because I, I was, I was looking at a different one. fishing flats, I could see myself getting really into it, so stay tuned for some more ocean trips. What's up everyone? Thank you very much for watching. Please do go check out our website at wishforfish.com to keep up to date with what's going on with Wish for Fish, as well as get some killer discounts and check out the Wish for Fish store for some sweet merchandise. If you're on Facebook or Instagram or other forms of social media, give us a follow at Wish for Fish. Most importantly, if you haven't subscribed already, please do because we're constantly updating new footage all the time. So you can do so by clicking this right here. And if you're interested in seeing more, check out some of our other videos from this season's playlist. Thanks a lot, everyone, and I'll see you guys in the water.